Hi everyone. Today I'm going to give you a brief tutorial of how to use Overleaf to create your own latex documents, like to write research papers and so on using today's technology. So what we need to do is get ourselves an Overleaf account. It is free, so you can just go and um, sign up. Go to new project, blank project. Maybe we can like Llama Tree users or something like that. Some some research paper you want to write, and then you come. You can get to see this is the how the template looks like. So we can go over to Llama Tree or ChatGPT or something. Key in something like this. Write me latex for this kind of paper. Title this. Um, use placeholders. You try not to use Gen AI to write your paper because then it loses the originality, right? But we can use it to do our formatting of the latex. No problem. Right. Use bib latex name references .bib for references. This is important because we want to keep the references separate to make the latex code neater. Let's copy and paste this here. Uh, take note if you have style files for a particular conference, you might want to use those style files instead because they already have all these uh, templated sections already there for you. But let's say you start from new, start from scratch. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So now what I want to show you is how to write your own bib latex. So you have this references .bib. So what we do is we create a new file called references.bit. So bit latex is really cool because once you create your own bit latex, you can simply go to Google Scholar, type in some paper you want, like attention is all you need. Go here, click on sites. And then what you can see is you can just click on the bit latex here, copy and paste this whole thing here. And that's already in bit references.bit. To cite it, we just need to say something like that. Slash site, slash funny attention, something like that. So we can even say something like transformers has taken the world by storm or something like that. And you can see that this, once you save it, immediately what you will see is that the reference has been generated for you over here. Okay, And this links to the reference at the bottom. So this is quite cool. And this really makes the whole writing process much smoother. You don't have to label your references anymore. And you don't even need to check this part here because um, Google Scholar does it quite well. So now let's say we want to add in some images, right? So what we will do now is I will go and download or create a new folder. We can put pictures or graphs or something. Pictures. Uh, right now I don't have anything, but I can go and like load in like a picture that I already preloaded, like this llama tree. Like it can be any picture. I'm just using llama tree because it just came out recently. So this is llama tree. So what we want to do is we want to add in the figure. How do we do that? No problem. We go back to the chat GPT or Lama tree interface. Insert a figure named Lama tree PNG with caption the architecture of Lama tree, something like that. Yep. So let's take a look. How do we get this output? Okay, give them a while to generate. Okay, so over here they misinterpreted why one. So instead of that, Generate latex code to insert figure. All right, so this should be the kind of code. I expect them to do something like use figure or begin figure. Yep, so we can just copy and paste this kind of code into wherever you want to use this. So maybe over here. So it's still good to learn basic latex because sometimes you see stuff like this, llama3.png, because I, I save it under pictures. So you need to know that this is a reference to your path. So over here, we have this. So if you want to change the text width, you can just increase the text width like that. Or, you know, you can just play around with this. And, you know, maybe if you want to change it, you can also change it here. How do I make the figure appear across only half the page? So it can be like a very interactive kind of assistant to help you to modify LaTeX code. Because you know, most of the time we just want to make the thing. We want to get the content. We don't really want to bother with the latex. So um, generative AI is great for that. So you can see over here, we need to do pictures. And there we go. We have the figure here, over here. And we can even say that like, no, llama tree, then you can reference your llama tree you can reference the label over here. So when you want to reference an image or reference a figure, you, you should give it a label and then you can reference it using REF over here. So with this reference, maybe you can see like C figure something. So this is how we do the referencing. And you can see over here, C figure one, right? So this is 
already quite cool because you can do this really, really fast. Um, this is how we insert figures uh, with a style guide. You know, you could just use whatever style that they want. I'm going to show you how to do tables now. So tables, very simple. Generate me a latex code to display a table. And maybe you can say something like that. Wins, losses. And then over here could be like program A, program B. So you can just give your table in free text form. And already you can see that this is the code that we have, like tabular and whatever. Copy and paste this whole thing here. So just take note here, there's something like you key miss go to the top and so on. This one, you probably need to learn a bit of latex in order to do that. Or you could just like prompt it in English. So you can see this is already generated. The table caption, you could just say like wins and losses of various programs. Okay, and then here we have tap my table. The win loss of various programs are given in table. And you can just put your reference again. So this is how we do referencing like that. So yeah, this is more or less how we get the rough things done. So if you want to do something even more complex, like for example, you can just copy and paste your table here. You add a percentage win column at the end and uh, put in bold the winning program, put in bold the row containing the winning, the program with the highest percentage win. You can do something like that. So you describe what you want to change to the table and we get ChatGPT to do for you. Of course, here, you know, if you want to do math or like ChatGPT or Lama tree may not be the best thing for math. Okay, but if you want to like bold your table, not a problem. You can see that over here, oh, they bold it wrongly. Look at that. With the highest percentage win. Again, they bold the bottom table instead. So there's some issue with math. So let's just change it both the row with program A instead. So this is just a uh, caution, okay? If you want to use generative AI, okay, do check whatever they do in your table, but this will save you a lot of time in terms of generating the code for the whole table. So you can see we have percentage win over here. Do, do check these numbers, but you can see that over here, we have just used Lama tree, or you can also use ChatGPT to get you this kind of tables. And you can see this other stuff over here. So there's one other thing I would like to tell you all is like, let's say you want to create this like discussion on a new page. You just go slash new page. And you can see that immediately, once we compile this whole thing, this is your original latex here. You can see over here, the next section here will have this discussion. And as you add more and more references, you can see this will be populated more and more. So. Yeah, that's more or less it for how to edit things. It's really simple. Everything like section is something like a paragraph. You can just edit the stuff in this. And just one other thing is that if you want to display equations, you cannot just do it normally. You have to use the LaTeX to display equations with a dollar sign, but not a problem because you can also use generative AI for that. You can just say, generate me code, LaTeX code to display the equation y equals to x squared plus cosine x minus theta a. And this is just a, a random code that you want uh, gen AI to convert to latex for you. And you can see over here, okay, we let's call it, um, label it equation one. Okay, because I want to give a label so that we can reference it later on. Remember everything needs, okay, everything needs a label so that we can reference it later. So let's take a look here. We have this equation. Let's put it here again. And you can see the equation will be generated here. So this is the equation here. So in order to use this equation, what we can do is like we can say something like that, C equation. And you can reference the equation using the label here, equation one. So this is something that um just take note is in general, this labels will be used to reference your figures, tables, and equations and so on. So it's best to label it meaningfully, like figures should be FIG, table should be TAB, and equation should be EQ or, or something like that. So that once you reference it, it's easy to reference. So you can see C table one and C equation one, where, where's it? C equation one. 
So you can see this is the equation and it's exactly what we wanted to type out. If you want to make this in line, all right, we can also just say, you know what? Make this equation in line, which means that we use a dollar sign instead so that we can represent this whole thing within the text. So you can see that this is what we see over here. We can also write like the equation is also like that. So I just want to show you that this is like the dollar sign over here. We can see that this is already present there in the text itself. So you don't have a separate equation like that. So these are the three main things that you would normally use for papers, images, tables, and equations. So if you want to characterize your things better, you can just copy and paste whatever code you want. Go to some generative AI interface, type in what you want. Like for example, over here, that's now in the um in, in the table. What I wanted them to do is add a percentage wing column and so on. You can just put whatever code you have here, whatever request that you, you have over here, and see the code here. And if it fails, you just keep doing it iteratively and so on. And that's the end of the small mini session for today. I hope this has uh, helped you all in terms of how to write a paper. And have fun. Yeah, signing out.